In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at tires. Specifically, we're gonna take a look at the different types of tire wear that you can find across different track day and racing paddocks to give you a better idea on what they mean and what you can do to fix them. So my intention here is to help you learn more about performance riding tire wear so that you're better equipped to deal with any nasty wear should you encounter it. However, the nature of this subject is quite complex and oftentimes the cause and fix of certain wear isn't always clear cut. With that said, please take this as a more simplified beginner's guide to tire wear, not the definitive manual. And lastly, before we jump into the first type, I wanted to quickly give credit to Dave Moss of Dave Moss Tuning. Everything that's gone into this video and the article that it's based on has come from the mountains of advice that Dave has given over the years. Dave is the man when it comes to tire wear, suspension tuning and bike setup. So if you want to learn more about this subject, then check him out through the various channels which I've linked in the description down below. Okay, with all of that said, I'm now gonna jump behind the screen to kick this off. So the first couple we're gonna look at are probably the most common you see around track day paddocks and are typically caused by incorrect tire pressures. The first is cold tear. Cold tear is caused by the tire being over inflated. When the tire is over inflated, the contact patch on the ground is too small, so it cannot generate heat that is widespread enough to bring the carcass of the tire up to operating temperature. Instead, what happens is the surface of the tire superheats very quickly while the carcass stays below operating temperature, meaning the surface of the tire is ripped straight off. As for the symptoms, the tears associated with cold tear are quite deep into the carcass and are somewhat fingernail shaped. If you can get a fingernail under them and almost peel a sizable chunk of the rubber back, then this is a surefire sign of cold tear. The next common type is hot tear. Hot tear is caused by the tire being under inflated. An under inflated tire causes the contact patch to be too large on the ground, which in turn means the tire overheats. When the whole of the tire overheats, the surface gets hot and is melted off very quickly and is pitched away due to the centrifugal force created when the tire spins. At first glance, it's quite similar to cold tear, but because the whole tire is overheating instead of just the surface, the rubber comes off with less effort as opposed to being ripped off a cold carcass like you see with cold tear, which means hot tearing isn't as deep. And those are the symptoms you can expect to find. As I said, it doesn't take much for the surface rubber to come off of an underinflated tire because the whole tire is overheating. So the tears on a tire experiencing hot tear are fairly shallow and more spread out, and you shouldn't be able to get a fingernail deep under them like you can with cold tear. You may also notice looking at the tire that the tears come down into the center of it in an arc shape because of that centrifugal force. Okay, now we're gonna move on to suspension related tire wear. When we start talking about suspension and how incorrect settings can affect tire wear, it's difficult to explain what symptoms mean what because not every form of wear is unique to one particular component of the suspension. However, what I want to give you here is an outline of some points that should help you better determine if your tyre problems could possibly be suspension related. If your suspension settings, meaning rebound, compression, sag or spring rate, are incorrectly set to the point where they're asking the tyre to act as part of the suspension, you are immediately going to see unusual wear or tearing because the tire simply wasn't designed to be used in that way. To the untrained eye, tire wear brought on from incorrect suspension could quite easily be palmed off as a pressure related problem. But there are some differences and some questions you can ask yourself to get you started on the right path to fixing it. First is, do you know if you have the correct spring? If your spring is either too hard or too soft for your weight, the carcass of the tire will be put under a lot of strain because it's being asked to act as a significant part of the suspension. This means the tire ends up quickly shredding itself to pieces because of the incorrect loads. Is the affected area uniform in width? Have a look at the thickness of the tear. If you notice the width of the tear is not uniform and changes considerably as you follow it around the tire, then this is a good indicator that something is wrong with the suspension, usually rebound being out of adjustment. Does the tear go all the way around? If it does, that may be poor tire pressure or geometry. However, if it doesn't and you follow the tear around the tire to notice that it's not continuous, meaning there's an affected area, then a sizable area where it's clean, then some more damage, then it goes clean again, this is another indicator that a suspension setting is out. Most probably rebound or compression or even a combination of them both. 
are the edges of the tread raised? If you have a raised area on either the leading or back edge of the tread, this is a strong sign that rebound damping on the forks or shock is set either too fast or too slow. Usually, if it's on the leading edge, rebound is too slow, and if it's on the back edge, it's too fast. By answering these questions, you should be able to determine whether or not you have a suspension-related issue. Next, we're going to move on to geometry tears. Specifically, these tears can come from poor weight distribution as a result of your setup. First, not enough weight on the front. This type of wear is not quite as common as things like hot and cold tear, as it comes from incorrect geometry setup which usually affects the front tyre. What you see in the picture is a result of there not being enough weight on the tyre so it cannot get to operating temperature. This means it cannot get proper grip or traction, and as a result the front tyre pushes and drags across the ground when the rider gets on the throttle, rather than rolling over it as it should. The surface then gets superheated and subsequently torn up. With not enough weight on the front, what you'll see is a much smaller band of tearing that looks very similar to hot tear on a rear tyre, only the band will be about 5-10mm to 10 millimeters thick, usually about halfway between the centre of the tyre and the edge. Also, it will typically be uniform all the way around the tyre. And the second of the geometry tears we're going to look at is a result of too much weight on the front. What happens in this instance is that when you start to steer the bike and lean it into a corner, because of the excessive weight on the front, it will actually plough across the ground rather than rolling, and it's only when you finish leaning the bike and you get back to the throttle that you take weight away from the front and the tyre is relieved. As well as having too much weight on the front, this type of tear can often be caused by the front end being too soft in conjunction with too much weight. As for symptoms, with too much weight on the front, it will be the edge third of the tyre that is showing signs of incorrect wear so the affected area is quite large. If your tyre is showing bad wear patterns on the edge third, where the start of the wear, that's the bit closest to the middle of the tyre, follows the circumference of the tyre uniformly, you can be pretty sure you're suffering from geometry tear and have too much weight on the front. Okay, so this next thing we're going to talk about isn't so much about wear, but more so a common question you see about tyres, and that is tyre discoloration, specifically when the tyres turn blue. This is a question you often see come up from a rider that's recently used the tyres and they've let the tyres cool. And many would suggest that the tyres are finished, but this isn't completely true. So what makes it blue? Tyres actually contain oils that help keep them soft, and the bluey greeny tint that you see on the tyres is just the oils coming to the surface. So why are they on the surface? After the tyres have been used to the point where they gain significant heat, when they cool down again, the oils in the tyre will often come to the surface. When you go back out and ride the bike again, these surface oils are scrubbed off and it's only when you come back in and let the tyres cool down again that you'll see more oils coming to the surface. Each time you take the tyre through this heat cycle, you are losing the oils that keep the tyre soft. That's why the more heat cycles a tyre has been through, the less effective the rubber is going to be for you. Okay, the last thing I wanted to cover here is what we want to see from our tyres and it looks something like this. If you have a pattern like this, which looks like a beach where the tide has gone out, your tires are wearing nicely. Now, this doesn't mean to say that they'll give you absolute optimum performance. For instance, racers will often sacrifice tire life for better performance, but it does mean that you're likely to see great longevity from your tire. Okay, that covers our look at many of these surface level issues that you may find with your tires. Once again, like I said up top, this is a fairly simplified guide to tyre wear and tearing as there are normally a multitude of factors that can come into play. Things like pressures, suspension makeup, how the riders ride the bike and even the nature of the track that you're riding. So my only intention here is to give you some baseline knowledge so that you can head in the right direction to getting your tyre problems fixed. If you like this video, hit the button below and subscribe to the channel for more performance riding content moving forward. Also be sure to check out the links to Dave's work below along with the accompanying article for this video. See you in the next one.